Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll begin by just offering my condolences to the family, and I think it underscores the circumstance, underscores how potentially horrific, almost unimaginable, what might be seen as mundane work can end up being at a critical moment. It's, it's, it is unimaginable, if you can imagine yourself at two or three in the morning falling, you know, 100, 200 feet into the water, steel and concrete crashing around you. With that, Administrator Bott, uh, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge is a toll, or was a toll facility that never received any federal funding prior to the collapse, right? Yes, sir. And how much revenue did the state of Maryland receive or generate from the bridge on an annual basis, if you know? Uh, sir, I, I'd have to double check. I don't want to give you a false number. Okay, I'll come I, back to you on that. I, I don't know if you would have a different figure than I do. I've got about fifty-six point eight million in twenty twenty-three, just for your reference. So that's what that's what they were taking. And under the current law and under this administration's plan, the bridge would get a hundred percent share. So the federal government would pay a hundred percent of that. And while you say that this is consistent with bridge collapse emergencies in the past, and I think you're referring to the I-35 uh, collapse, that was not a toll bridge, right? That was part of the interstate system. And so my questions, I, I guess, center around payment for this. I, I think we can all agree that we probably and shouldn't wait for the insurance companies and the litigators to work it out, but, the ins but Maryland had insurance on the bridge, didn't they? Uh, sir, I'm aware of one policy that Maryland has for $350 million. $350 million, right? Yes. So that should, by all rights, you would assume be actioned and go towards paying for a portion, whatever portion of the bridge reconstruction it would pay for, right? It would Absolutely, sir. We just, I have yet to go through and have our lawyers figure out exactly what is in there. But yes, whatever portion of that $350 million we would apply. So I guess um, when you say consistent with past emergencies, as you already said, the relief fund is, is $3.7 billion behind. We're $35 trillion this month in debt at the federal level. And I wonder if you think it's fair that the American taxpayer should not only pay to reconstruct the bridge, but then pay tolls after which to use the infrastructure they just paid for in their taxes. Is that, is that, because you're gonna set a new precedent here, and is that the precedent we're going to set? Or is there some plan to recoup the cost of reconstruction of the bridge? And I think according to the figures we've heard today, upwards of $2 billion, a bridge that originally cost 60.3 million. Is there some plan to recoup that and send that back into the disaster relief fund or to the the, the, the highway fund, which continually needs massive infusions from the general fund just to stay afloat. What's the plan? Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, very important questions, and I appreciate uh, your interest. So let me just try to uh, quickly go through that. Um, where this was a Maryland state facility before, now it's been designated as part of the interstate system. Uh, they were free uh, before to collect their tolls and use them you know, for, you know, maybe Port of Baltimore, whatever they were using them for. Now, since this has been federalized as a facility and going forward when the tolls are restored, uh, as part of the interstate system, it will now, they will have to use those for Title 23 eligible um, funding. So whether it's the maintenance of the existing bridge or other Title 23 highway purposes in Maryland. So the American taxpayer will be benefiting from those tolls. Um, in terms of the Precedent, if it was a pre-existing toll facility, um, they are allowed to toll the facility going forward. But again, it would be using Title 23 uh, eligible expenditures on those tolls. I understand the Title 23 expenditures and understand that they'd be used for surface transportation in Maryland, but you're asking the taxpayers from across the country to pay for it. And, and you know, if you're from Washington state, likely you're never gonna travel across that bridge, but you're sure gonna pay for it. And as long as we're setting precedent, I think it would be appropriate at least to consider re reimbursing through the tolls, the emergency fund or the transportation fund for the entire country before all of the money goes right back to the state that that's gonna be receiving it where the bridge resides, which arguably I think can be said was not prepared to withstand the traffic impact 
that it had. Meanwhile, it's, it's right there. I mean, it's not like it was a surprise that the bridge is there and ships are going under it and, and, and this could happen. So, so with that in mind, uh, you know, with the, with the time that I've already expended and expired, I hope you would consider a plan to reimburse the taxpayer under horrific debt right now. We can't afford their groceries, their gas bills, their, their, their daycare bills for the cost of this bridge for which one state has been receiving all the money for its entire existence and apparently is going to receive all the money from the tolls for the rest of its existence. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield the balance.